Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some new discoveries and new studies that essentially tell us a little bit more about the effects of various supernova that happen in the vicinity of the solar system, with the emphasis in this case being on how it affects the evolution of life on planet Earth, or to be more exact, how the supernova in this case might potentially cause extinction events, or at least decrease the diversity of life on the planet. With a lot of this based on various observations from the last few years, but more importantly, coming from various X-ray telescopes such as the NASA's Chandra that recently discovered some things about supernova we didn't really know before. Although in this case, I think it's important to start with things we still don't really understand, and that's despite years and years of different studies and various investigations. Even today, there is still no exact agreement on what exactly supernova do to our planet when they do happen within the vicinity of approximately 100 light years. With the main assumption being that, well, they probably have some sort of an effect on the atmosphere, and potentially even change the climate of the planet, but it's the exact effects of these changes that are still debated by various scientists. But more importantly, it's not just something that happens once, it's actually an effect that occurs several times because of what happens inside the supernova. First you get a lot of emissions that travel basically at the speed of light, but later on, hundreds or even thousands of years later, that planet can also be bombarded by a lot of radioactive particles, the remnants from the supernova itself. And intriguingly, in the last few years, the scientists have actually discovered a few signs of a potential supernova happening on the planet within the last 8 million years. Based on a lot of sediments containing things like Iron 60 that actually has been found in deep sea rock deposits in the Pacific Ocean, including certain other signs, such as various ions, possibly delivered by these powerful events. You can learn a little bit more about this in one of the videos in the description. But at the same time, it's still not entirely clear how far away supernova needs to be in order to have basically no effect on the planet, or what specific effect supernova needs to produce in order to affect the planet the most, especially when it comes to, for example, extinction events. But obviously there are quite a lot of various studies exploring this idea, with some studies being a little bit more speculative, but providing some explanations. And at least one recent study provides a few more observations in regards to what supernova might do to our planet. Now this study is more of a correlation study, it's not a causation study, which means that it basically it discovers some signs of potential supernova happening and also some things happening to planet Earth. And so this study that you can find in the description below identifies a potential correlation between biodiversity and the amount of supernova happening around planet Earth. Although in this case, if you look at the time graph, you'll notice that it goes back in time by approximately 500 million years. And so this is of course somewhat speculative, especially when it comes to measuring supernova. Now when it comes to biodiversity on the planet, the geological record allows us to sort of create a graph which takes us back a few hundred million years, indicating how biodiversity changed over the years. In this case also showing us when the potential mass extinction events occurred, which can then be investigated in more detail. This is of course how we know that the dinosaurs seem to have perished around the same time, while also discovering the biggest mass extinction events that happened previously. The one 250 million years ago was probably the biggest. But when it comes to measuring supernova frequency, it gets a little bit more difficult. And so to try to assess that, previous studies have basically relied on the idea of open clusters, or the proximity of these clusters to planet Earth. With these clusters in this case, representing locations with the highest frequencies of various supernova. And so at least some studies created a kind of a timeline deriving the supernova frequency variation over the past 500 million years. Now it's not super accurate, but I guess it's the best we have right now. And if you were to combine this with observations from planet Earth, to some extent it's possible to start seeing certain correlations, at least according to some scientists. And although this is still not widely supported, it's not something that should be ignored. But anyway, so what exactly are some of these findings? Well, first of all, there is a correlation between decreasing biodiversity of shallow marine life and the higher frequency of supernova, with the study suggesting that the marine life overall decreases in diversity as the supernova frequencies increase, with the main conclusion in this paper being that supernova tends to change the climate, most likely making it a lot cooler than it would be otherwise, and the higher the frequency of supernova, the colder the climate gets which might also affect the way that nutrients circulate in the oceans and potentially affecting a lot of other cycles on the planet whose effects we still don't really understand. But that's of course somewhat speculative because there's really no direct evidence that this is actually what happens. Once again, at the moment this is just a correlation, and even here if you look at the error margin, it is pretty large. 
So this is still very, very speculative. But what is not speculative is a recent discovery coming from the Chandra X-ray Observatory, the telescope that's essentially observing the universe in the X-ray light. And that telescope discovered something that we didn't really know about supernova before, something that is just now being discovered by observing 31 different supernova that happened in the last few years. Now all of these supernova mostly happen really far away, but the observations are extremely accurate. And in this case they seem to show us one thing. The supernova, on average, produce way more X-rays than anyone thought ever possible, and these X-rays could potentially have dramatic effects on anything nearby. In other words, even though the previous assumption was that supernova might influence the planet through cosmic rays or a lot of other radioactive compounds, and in this case potentially influencing the upper atmosphere by maybe increasing the generation of clouds and thus lowering the overall temperature, the X-ray studies seem to indicate something a little bit different. They actually suggest that certain types of supernova produce X-rays that last for up to several decades. And this huge amount of X-rays coming from a single point could dramatically damage atmospheres of all nearby planets, thus impacting life as we know it. With a few of these 31 supernovas studied producing so much lethal X-rays that they would most likely affect planets as far away as 160 light years away potentially stripping them of any protective layers in the upper atmosphere. And that's in contrast to previous studies that mostly focused on either fast-moving gamma rays or slow-moving particles that irradiate planets afterwards. In this case, the observations show us that it's really the X-rays that could maybe cause the most damage to various planets, dramatically changing the chemistry of the atmosphere on the planet, potentially stripping the ozone layer, and of course affecting a lot of organisms exposed to all of this radiation which could explain some of these correlation observations. Another strange effect in this case could be a huge production of nitrogen dioxide that can actually turn the atmosphere a little bit hazy, changing the planet from something like this to possibly something like this, dramatically affecting all life on the surface of the planet and thus leading to a potential extinction event. And all of this was determined by basically measuring the amount of X-rays produced by various supernova. With the supernova that was detected in 2010 at the moment producing the most X-rays ever observed. In this case, an Earth-like planet within 100 light years away from this supernova would most likely have almost nothing survive on the surface. And so definitely a pretty intriguing discovery and something that I'm sure a lot of future studies will be exploring a little bit more. But the natural next question is, is this something that's going to be happening anytime soon and are we in any danger in the next few hundreds of years? Well, as I mentioned before, the last powerful event very likely happened millions of years ago, possibly anywhere between 2 and 8 million years. And we don't really know of any major extinction events that happened around this time. And when it comes to future supernova, none of them at the moment are close enough to us to have these dramatic effects. At the moment there is only a handful of potential candidates for future supernova, but they're all going to be happening thousands of years in the future. Here's actually an extremely short list of future candidates for a potential type 2 supernova that can be pretty powerful but they are very far away. Although there's still a chance that there might be some type 1 supernova from some kind of a white dwarf binary that we haven't discovered yet that could potentially happen within the next few hundreds of years if those white dwarfs reach what's known as Chandrasekhar limit. One of the videos in the description might explain this a little bit better. But the idea here is that, well, for at least a few hundred years we should be okay. But what happens afterwards, that's of course another question. Nothing super dangerous, potentially leading to extinction event, is going to happen anytime soon. But these are still pretty intriguing and somewhat unnerving discoveries that I'm sure we'll need to have follow-up studies just to clarify exactly what might happen, when it might happen, and what sort of effects it might have on the planet itself. Although I'm sure by then we'll have other worries and other concerns. Anyway, we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos and you can actually check out some of the previous videos, including the video on IK Pigasi, the closest potential supernova to us, in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.